So I think one of the biggest questions that you might have is, but how will making stuff for fun actually help me? You know, is making something silly or random actually going to turn into something one day? And I think a lot of people think too much when they're creating content about what other people want to see, but they're missing a really fundamental thing about what they actually want to create. And so this leads to this thing that I call the cycle of frustration. So you've probably run into this cycle before if you've tried creating content on your own, where you have that initial excitement where you're just like, oh, I'm so excited to create something. And then you create that thing, maybe it flops or it doesn't do as well as you thought it would. And you try to look at what works and you're researching all these things. You're looking at retention editing, you know, the attention economy. You're looking at all these hacks and all these things that maybe don't really resonate with you, but you try anyways because everyone says they work. But a fundamental thing is missing from this cycle and that is purely just fun. It's understanding what is actually fun for you to create and what you actually enjoy. And so at this point in time in my Instagram or my content journey, um, I was creating stuff that didn't really provide value for anyone, but it was just really fun for me to make. Um, so at the time, I was in Japan for a little bit, uh, and I was just making these really cinematic reels of just beautiful things that I saw. And these didn't get that much views. I know it looks like it has thousands, but literally, um, this only happened after my other content started blowing up. So these had maybe like a few hundred views at the time, um, if even. And so eventually, as you start creating more things just for fun, you start to gain momentum again. And after you start to gain momentum, that's when you can start to look at the intersection of fun and impact. So I think, again, going back to what I was saying earlier about how most people kind of look too much at how can I add value to others, um, I think one way that you can kind of merge or, inter or intersect the two is first thinking about what interests you. So again, what is something that you actually want to create? What is something that genuinely brings you joy and you know you feel excited about and then from there you can start to tailor into a lens of how might this apply to others so for example with my lesson series um, it was interesting to me because i always do end of year reflections i always kind of reflect on the year and so whenever i was making one of those videos i would then think about okay how might this apply to others while they might be thinking about similar things, they might be you know, curious to learn about how I've navigated things that they might experience, and that helped me tailor what I was creating in a way that kind of hit both boxes of both being fun for myself, but then also being applicable or adding value to others. So moving on in time of my content journey, uh, at this point in time, my relationship with creating content, as you can see, was improving as I was prioritizing more of what actually drove me, what was like actually fun for me. And at this point in time, I was trying to navigate uh, a lot of different things. So I was creating the series, the 23 Lessons in 2023 series. And this is when I learned that it's really, really important to experiment with intention. I think that when it comes to content creation in particular, uh, there's a lot of variables that come to mind, right? There's what platforms to use, what styles, um, does gear actually matter? There's a lot of different things that you can experiment with. And it's really hard to actually tell what's working because there's just too many variables at stake. And so I think one thing that I want to really dig into is how I experimented with my 23 lessons in 2023 series and kind of what I learned from that. Uh, so I think that creating content is very much so like baking a cake. Uh, you can choose different ingredients and there's a lot of different aspects to it. There's your theme, there's the script, there's the hook, music, visuals. Um, there's all these different components that can be combined in so many different ways uh, to produce different results. And so 23 Lessons from 2023 was my cake essentially. And so as you can see here, uh, I, for my first six or my first five videos of this series, I had the same introduction. So I had this match cut introduction as like one piece of the cake or one ingredient of the cake. And none of these videos really popped off, but the one that did happened to be the next one, which is one where, oh. Okay. Twice before taking someone else's advice. Welcome to lesson six of 23 things I learned in 2023. Okay, so you can kind of see the difference here where it's like for this one, I started off all five of the videos the same way. And if you're a viewer who's just scrolling through your feed, it looks like it's all the same video. 
uh, because you just see the same match cuts every single time. And I didn't really realize that. And so when I experimented suddenly with introducing the hook first, like what you saw in the, next, in the, the last slide, um, that was the video that actually blew up. And because I had so many other videos of a similar nature, uh, those other videos started to blow up as well. And so it gave a lot of people something to latch onto and keep following along rather than just having one viral video and then people kind of forget about you after. So I think that this way of experimentation is really important because uh, there's a consistent theme across the whole series. So people kind of know what to expect. But there's a lot of room for you to experiment with your style and how you edit, the visuals that you use, how you tell your story. And so I think when you think about experimentation, try to reduce the amount of variables there while still having some kind of consistent theme that allows you to be flexible in different ways. Um, so this brings me to now lesson number five. Uh, so before things started to blow up with that series, uh, there was a point in time where, again, I was kind of questioning, like, what am I really doing? Is this really going to pay off? I wasn't really sure where things were headed at the time. And so I remember I was reaching out to Farza and a few other people just asking for feedback, asking them what they thought about my content. And this was a message that really stuck with me that Farza said. And uh, you guys can kind of read it on the screen. But the TLDR of this message is basically, how can you look outside of what you're doing right now and control your own destiny? Are there other things that you can do outside of just making content that can increase your odds? And so for me, this really got me thinking about what I was doing because at this point in time, I felt like I was making something that resonated with what I liked, it was fun. Uh, the only missing piece was I was just wondering why people weren't seeing it because I felt really confident in it. I got really good feedback from like some of my peers and things like that, but it still, it still wasn't really blowing up. And so what I realized was if the right people aren't coming to you, you have to go find them. And so I think one of the most important things outside of even just creating content is also just finding other people in your community or in the niche that you're interested in. And so I spent a lot of time on Instagram just looking for creators who I resonated with, creators who inspired me and creators who uh, I thought I could learn from. And from there, I actually found, for example, Adrian Purr. And he had this Discord community at the time where he would literally do work reviews. And he would just review people's work and give them feedback. But most people, again, and they're so busy with creating that they don't think to go find these things or they don't think to go find these um, resources. And so this right here, uh, I know there's no sound, uh, but I remember I went into Adrian's work review. I submitted the video that I made on YouTube of the, like, the Dear Strangers, uh, so getting strangers to read letters. And him and his girlfriend literally cried on stream watching the video. And that was like a huge motivation for me. So even though at the time I didn't have the validation of you know, all these views or followers, uh, what kept me going was knowing that big creators or people who I looked up to, like Adrian, were still acknowledging my work. And so if you don't get the attention that you want, uh, just go find those people. Go see where they're at and try to make them notice you. I think that was probably one of the biggest things that I had learned in my journey. So eventually, after continuing to do all these things, continuing to show up, continuing to try to find other creators, uh, my account blew up. And people ended up finding my other work, as I mentioned before, which kind of just continued on this loop of um, growth. So it may sound like everything is going great and everything is going well. Uh, so why is there another dip? Well, I think one thing that's really interesting is that you think that going viral will solve all of your problems um, and that life will suddenly be different. But I remember when I blew up, I was just in my bedroom. It was like December, right before the holidays. And I was like sick because I had just come back from Japan. And I was just thinking to myself like, wow, nothing, nothing really changed. I don't really know what I was expecting uh, to happen after I went viral. But life was very much the same. And so I think this, again, just goes back to the whole message that imposter syndrome doesn't really go away. And so if you think that virality or going big is going to solve your problems, uh, the truth is it's not. And the most important thing, again, is just finding joy in the process, which is why I keep kind of going back to that theme of just learning how to have fun. Um, so yeah, going viral won't solve your problems. Refer back to lesson three, which is learn how to have fun again. Um, so I guess for me, uh, another big part of kind of having fun in the journey was not making content my whole life. 
Uh, so I don't know if a lot of you guys know this, but I actually ended up signing on to a full-time job in January of this year. And I think a lot of people assume that when you go viral or when you make it big, um, you're just gonna kind of go full-time on being a content creator. Uh, but I think for me, again, just as someone who is still trying to feel, or tr still trying to figure out what my style is and what I really want to do with content creation, um, for me, getting a job at the time was a really good choice for me just because I was able to now um, do content as something that was more of a fun outlet and not necessarily rely on it as my main livelihood or source of income. And so I think that's just something to think about because uh, I think a lot of people, again, kind of idealize this whole creator lifestyle. Uh, but the thing about that is once you start creating and you know you rely on sponsorships and in, as like your main source of income uh, once you start like once you stop creating so does the money like the money also stops coming in and so this is just something that I'm like transparently also trying to navigate right now in my point in time of content of how do I actually turn this into a lifestyle and is that something that I even actually want and so for me at least right now having a job is just something that allows me to keep content fun and allows me to experiment without having to worry about for example like my engagement rates or things like that tanking um, so yeah, this is kind of where I am right now. Uh, still trying to continually improve my relationship with creating content and learn along the way. And I'm still trying to find my style. I think that uh, as much as I feel like I've found something that works for me, uh, as a creative, you're always trying to figure out how can you be better? Or how can you continue showing up in new creative ways? And so for me, I'm trying to find my style. And I think the thing that I've realized in this process is that the biggest differentiator is you at the end of the day. And so I think that if you show up authentically, you show up as you, then that's kind of the best way to guarantee that the right people will find you. I think we often hear the case of people who go viral off of one video, but it's not actually something that they like creating. And then they end up kind of stuck in that niche. And so I think if there's one thing to keep in mind, and this is like pretty generic stuff, but I think it's a good reminder, is that if you just show up as yourself and um, you know do things that you're uniquely positioned to do, I think that's the biggest differentiator that you have against any other creators at the end of the day. So show up as you as much as possible and create more, consume less, stay creating. <laughs>